bread, darling. I love you. I know. You are my inspiration, Eileen. I do hate to interrupt, but would you mind hanging up, please? The other half of my party line. Just ignore her, she'll go away. I've got an important call to make. Get off this line. I know it is early, Sherry, but I just had to talk to you. Sing me a little of our song. Tu es mon inspiration, Yvette. Must you zoom up so fast? That's a peach of a hangover she's got this morning. Why does she have to go out and get stoned every night? Oh, I don't know, Harry. Maybe she's got a party line. <laughs> Mrs. Walters, be careful. This is priceless. Good. Then we can drill a hole in the bottom. A hole? So we can wire it for a lamp. Mrs. Walters, we do not wire 14th century crematory urns. Jan! Hello, Jonathan. I was trying to call you all morning, but your line's been oh, busy. naturally. In grateful appreciation of the very brilliant job you've been doing on my office. Jonathan, you just don't go around giving girls cars. I do. See you tomorrow. Good morning. Oh, Mrs. Walters, I'm sorry to be so late. That's all right, dear. Mr. Pierrot and I had a very fruitful morning. Now, don't forget, I'm expecting you both at the housewarming tomorrow evening. <laughs> well, we'll be there. That woman has the taste of a water buffalo. Where were you? I tried to reach you all morning. Oh, lover boy got started very early today. Now? I'm the one who can't get a call through, and they sent me this. Listen, your complaint has been found to be completely unwarranted and untruthful. Here, read it for yourself. You know I never get into focus until 10 o'clock. Hello? Miss Morrow, my name is Brad Allen. Yes? Miss Morrow, why are you so fascinated with my personal affairs? I'm not fascinated, Mr. Allen. Revolted. Well, obviously, you're a woman who lives alone. I don't know what's bothering you, but don't take your bedroom problems out on me. From the hour to the half hour, the phone will be yours. From the half hour to the hour, it will be mine. How does that sound? Like a report from the United Nations. I was waiting for you to make some off-color remark. Miss Morrow, is that all you have on your mind? Bedroom problems. No, the other way. How's it look? You look beautiful. Oh, Jonathan. Jen, why won't you marry me? Jonathan, I don't love you. Well, that's absurd. I've got everything. Including three ex-wives. Oh, that's what it is. <laughs> Jonathan, I just don't happen to love you. Well, how do you know? Love isn't an opinion. It's, it's a chemical reaction. <laughs> oh, Jonathan. Well, I'll call you tomorrow, then. Oh, call between the half hour and the hour. Jan, marry me and I'll smub you with private phones. <laughs> that kind of talk could sweep a girl off her feet. Come on in, Jonathan. The door's open. Hi, Brad. Got any more songs ready? Almost. I'm putting up $200,000 for this show. We've got a theater deadline to meet. Money seems to have lost its value these days. With $200,000, my grandfather cornered the wheat market and started a panic in Omaha. Today, you can't even frighten songwriters with it. Trouble with you is you're prejudiced against me because I'm part of a minority group. Millionaires. You outnumber us, but you'll never get us. Why, Jonathan, you sound absolutely bitter. Well, you don't know what this show means to me. You started out with nothing, and you've really made something out of yourself. Me, I started out in college with $8 million, and I've still got $8 million. I just can't seem to get ahead. Yeah. Well, there is a girl. Mm. She is the loveliest. She's the most talented person I've ever met. That's what you said when you married that stripper. Mind if I call her up? No. Go right ahead. What's her name? Jan. She shares a party line with some nut. <laughs> that's, that's ridiculous. Still busy. 
I must be on the wrong half hour. Brad, believe me, there is nothing in this world so wonderful, so fulfilling, as coming home to the same woman every night. Why? Well, if you want to, you can find tricky arguments against anything. I gotta be going. Listen, remember, I need those songs. Hello? Uh, Miss Morrow, uh, this is Brad. I've been extremely rude. I thought we could get together. Have a cup of coffee, maybe. Frankly, some jokes are just too obvious to be funny. Good evening, Mother. How's the party going? Oh, lovely, dear. Miss Morrow, I want you to meet my son, Tony. Hello, Hello. Tony. Tony can drive you into town. Oh, no. Up. You're still on your first one. It's very nourishing. Will you please stop trying to get me drunk? A Harvard man never resorts to getting a woman drunk, except in an emergency. And you, Miss Morrow, are an emergency. You can stay till AA comes for you. I am leaving. I'm just one dance and I'll go home, I promise. How are you going to get on friendly terms with that? I don't feel so good. Ah. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. I, I wonder if you would ask a couple of waiters to help get him Why, outside. Why, shucks, ma'am. I can't tell you how embarrassing this is, Mr. Uh, Stetson, ma'am. Uh, Rex Stetson. Drive him slow and set him down real easy, partner. <laughs> you married? No, ma'am, I'm not. So unpretentious and honest. Hello? I need to go out to dinner tomorrow night, and I sure would enjoy seeing a friendly face across the table. I'll be stopping by about 7.30. All right. Miss Morrow, Brad Allen. Oh. Take my advice. Don't go out with that man tomorrow night. He's a phony. This ranch hand Romeo's just trying to lure you into the nearest barn. Don't judge other people by yourself. Whenever I want to feel close to home, the only thing that helps is getting behind a horse. <laughs> oh, Texas must be a wonderful place. Oh, yes, ma'am. It is. It is. Hello? Ma'am, you done did a terrible thing to me. You made me glad I ain't in Texas. We got all kinds of natural resources back home, but we ain't got nothing like that. <laughs> Am I gonna see you tonight? Oh, I'd love to, Rex, but I already have a date tonight. I'll pick you up at eight. I'll be ready. I'll have these initialed if you like. Why did you break our date? Who is he? What's his name? Rex Stetson. Do I know him? No. He's visiting here from Texas. Jen, if you marry him, you'll have to live out there. Jen, you can't live in Texas. <laughs> it's Rex Stetson you want? I hope it's Rex Stetson you get. Look, you're the detective agency. All I know is that his name is Rex Stetson and he's from Texas. What? Oh, all right, if it'll save any time, I'll be right over. Mr. Allen's here to see I can't see him. Sure you can. Where are you going? So remember that gal I told you about, Jan? What about her? Well, she meets this stupid cowboy from Texas, of all places, and she falls for him. Don't worry, I'll break it up. You will? Yeah. How? It takes an early bird to get the best of a worm like me. Just admit I was right. You're a Western gentleman. He turned out to be a prairie wolf, didn't he? Yes, he took me to his hotel room. He showed me Central Park, and then we left. Hmm. Must I spell it out? Well, there are some men who just, uh, well, they're very devoted to their mothers. You know, the type that likes to uh, collect cooking recipes. You are sick! This isn't Rex Stetson, this is... my best friend. Hello? It's for you. Thank you. Oh, good work. 
Get your coat, Mr. Forbes. He and the girl just went into a little club known as the Hidden Door. You should have listened to my psychiatrist. He told me never to trust anyone but him. Is this Roly Poly? Yes, it is. Oh, I love it. There's a guy in this old town, I'm telling you a fact. When I get my arms around, we cuddle cheek to cheek. Yeah, yeah, Roly Poly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, must be very exciting working with all them colors and fabrics and all. Would you like some dip? Ain't these tasty? Mm. Wonder if I could get the recipe. Sure would like to surprise my ma when I go back home. Don't you find me attractive? Yeah. Oh, well, uh, ma'am, I, I wouldn't want to do anything that might spoil our friendship. Is that all it is with us? Ma'am, that's a direct question. I think it deserves a direct answer. If you excuse me, I'd better go to the powder moon. I mean, real. For when you're close to me, no, they could be blue. There's our man. Yes, I know. Need a light, cowboy? We'll do this nice and clean so no one's embarrassed. You'll pack. Where am I going? Connecticut. No phone and 20 miles to the nearest girl. Remember, I'll be watching you. Hello. You know, uh, I'm sure gonna miss you, leaving New York and all. You're leaving? Mm hmm when? Tonight. Have to mosey up to Connecticut. Didn't I tell you? No. It's gonna be mighty lonely up there. Ma'am, if I sent you home in a taxi, how long do you think it would take you to get packed up? We're wasting time. You cold? No, it's wonderful. If he only knew what I was thinking. Possess me. May I help you, sir? Yes, uh, I've been trying to call to phone Miss Morrow for uh, some time now. There's been no answer. She's just gone to Connecticut for the weekend. Connecticut? And you let her go? And I helped him pack. Very different. I reckon I feel more at home. I better get some more logs. Quicker than a cow poke chasing a chalk wagon. Crossing rat. Will you please take me home? Of course. At least you could have had the decency to bring your own champagne. Oh, <laughs> 
Throw yourself, Jan. I thought we were going to get married. Forget it. You're becoming hysterical. Oh. I hate to do this, Jan, but this is for your own good. <laughs> jumped upon by five or six ruffians. What? That's all right. Have you seen her, John? No. Have you talked to her? No, I've decided to give her up on the advice of my psychiatrist. Also my dentist. I just sat there feeling guilty. You're in love. You could be right. You love her, and she can't stand the sight of you. <laughs> yeah. Miss Marlowe is here to see you. It's the painting I was telling you about. Ah. Well, let's get on with the hanging, shall we? I believe you're acquainted with Brad Allen. Jonathan, how do I get her back? You don't. That's the beauty of it. You suffer, and I watch. Alma. Excuse me. Uh, may I talk to you? Get lost. I'd know that voice of yours anywhere. Oh, the telephone. I. I'm one of your most devoted listeners. Good. I know a nice little bar right down the street. I know a better one. Now, let's take this problem from the beginning. Really very simple. You hire her to do your place. Happy? Happy. Hi there, slugger. This will fix you up. I've had hangovers before, but this time, even my hair hurts. Didn't you find out anything from her? All I remember is this voice swimming towards me through a sea of scotch. You got an apartment. She decorates apartments. You know the number? Yeah. Oh, not so loud. What do you think? You were absolutely right. This is much better. Call uh, Brad Allen back and tell him it's impossible. Because I haven't the time to do his place. I couldn't yeah. subject you to such uh, an experience. Once I had the mumps. It wasn't very pleasant, but I got over it. I've had him. It's over. I'm immune to him. All right, John. It's your decision. Mr. Allen, I'm a decorator. You're a client. I'm here because you are paying for my professional services. Uh, this is where I do my work. <laughs> and up here? The bedroom. And these? Uh, uh, just switches. Uh, over here. Uh, Mr. Allen, if I'm going to redo the apartment, I have to know what everything is for. Why redecorate? It's so functional for your purposes. That bed is the first thing I want you to get rid of. I'm sorry, Mr. Allen. Once we get started, you'll have to move out. Just do the place the way you'd like it. Ooh. Call these shops and tell them I'll be coming by, will you? It's like a spider. And he expects me to redecorate his web. Ha! Yes, Mr. Allen, your apartment will be ready first thing in the morning. Mm-hmm. Behold, Jonathan, the work of a woman in love. Oh, no! It bit me. Harry! Alma! Officer, arrest this man. He's taking me up to his apartment. Can't say as I blame him, miss. It's customary for the groom to carry the bride across the threshold. What bride? As far as I'm concerned, you can stay here and charge admission. Hello, 